Hi everyone, today I thought it would be fun to do a picture from this book, um, Nature Mandalas by Mel Pomony Chatsapanagio 2. It's a book I've done only um, one page in so far, which I think was this one. Um, I just showed it to you, it's Sparkle Sparkle, which was a lot of fun. I used the Castle Arts metallic pencil, so you've got those sort of muted colours with a high shine on the wing, I thought was fun. Um, but I thought I would do one with you. This was a buddy colour with a friend, but I thought I would do one with you today. So it's probably going to actually take um, more than one session, but that's okay. And I have picked this one. I'm just going to open the book up a little bit. I'm actually going to put the book under my pencils so we can see it. There we go. Now, we have here a lily pond. Um, I did have a request um, to do water which is uh, part of the reason I chose this page. I was thinking it's quite a fun one to do. So I'm not going to do the whole page for you as usual. I'm going to work through some of the elements and uh, show you a completed image when I'm done. So I'll show you, I'll show you how to do each bit. So like, because it repeats, um, I'll just do one dragonfly and then you can rewatch that bit of the video if you need to or sort of do all four at once while you're following along. It's up to you really. But that is actually where I'm going to start. So I'm going to start with the dragonfly. We're going to have to bring the camera in a little bit so we can see because there are a lot of details that's come in. I think that's probably enough. There we go. Now I've got my Derwent Lightfast pencils today because they have got the exact colour combination that I want to do for the um, dragonfly. I'm just trying to find the right pencil. My husband has been pinching my set. Here we go. But uh, this is the one I want to start with. So I'm going to start with the sapphire. I don't know how easy that is to see. I think that's out of focus. The light's catching on it. And we're going to I'm not going to do the wings at this point, I'm just going to do the um, body. So I'm going to, there's a lot of markings on here and bits and pieces and I'm actually going to ignore all of those and I'm just going to colour a, a really dark vibrant edge to our dragonfly and just fade it towards the middle. So these are quite vibrant pencils anyway and I haven't tried them on this paper as I showed you. I haven't coloured much in here. They're going down really nicely I think. It's quite a smooth paper. Um, sometimes that can be a little too slick for a pencil like this but I'm happy with it. Um, so I'm just trying to fade it a little bit towards the middle. So putting down that dark edge. I know this seems a strange colour for a dragonfly but you'll see when I add my second colour, it hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, it will all come together and work. So that is that. There we go. My only concern about this set is the pinks. We don't have the exact pink that I'd like, but I think we can adapt. Now my second colour is this colour. This is called turquoise green. Now, if you have a different set of pencils you're following along, Prismas um, has a similar shade to these two. I'm not sure what. Um, in Polychromos, I would use a cobalt blue and then the darkest, one of the really dark blue cobalt blues. There are different ones. And your um, light phthalo green. You can use those. So right over the top of the blue that's here already and then take that colour towards the centre. You can um, reduce the layers towards the middle because we want it to be a little bit lighter. I'm not sure whether leaving any white paper is quite going to work with this sort of intense dark design. But I'll try a little bit and see what happens. I've only tried a bit there, it's not even in the centre, I think I won't actually change my mind. So over the top of the blue and then just bringing the colour across towards the middle. I'm actually pressing quite hard, this paper can take it. Do you need to be a little careful? Yeah, so my husband's been pinching these, he's got a, a sort of art book he's working from which has ideas in. So uh, he's sometimes he's just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to paint. 
So he's bought a book which is just like, right, this is what you do today, sort of thing. So that's what he needed to just sort of kick him into action, really. Now, the wings. I hadn't thought beyond the uh, body. <laughs> what I think I'm going to do is actually use this colour for the main bit of the wings. I think it will look really pretty. I love this colour, as you can tell, because it's not very long. Now, any dark blue will sort of work together with it. Um, I, thought I just tend to choose the sapphire, but um, I think the um, dark turquoise would also work quite well. So it isn't necessary to use a really specific one. But obviously this shade of green turquoise, I'm not sure what I would call it, is, uh, is the key. And I feel like this is slightly smudging the black into it. I'm not sure it feels like it to me. It just looks a bit black-ish, blacker than I would imagine or expect. Seeing if there's any black on the pencil. There isn't. Maybe it's just me. Maybe, I think it's probably more likely to be because the drawing has got so much black in it, it just makes it look darker rather than it actually pushing black into the pencil. Now, you notice I'm not doing any shading here. I'm just colouring. I think if you think about how the wing would look, I don't think it would have loads of shading in it. I think it would be quite uh, sort of see-through but uh, and delicate and light and so you wouldn't really see any um, shading so I'm just going over it. We'll do a little bit in these gaps here, you'll see in a minute. I'm going to do both sides of our dragonfly although they're the same. I'll just continue on and I'll tell you what I did this morning. I uh, had a little walk into town I walked along by the canal. I thought you might like to know I saw a lovely swan. It was having a good preen of itself, so cleaning up all its feathers. So that was fun. We don't often see swans this way anymore, so it was nice to see it. They're usually a little bit further along. I see them if I were walking the other direction away from town. But I um, haven't seen one our way for a while. I think um, my neighbour, my ex-neighbour, she used to live next door, doesn't any longer. She used to feed the swans every day. She would buy grain from um, the Wildfowl Trust and also um, cut up squares of bread. And they're not really supposed to feed them bread, but anyway, that's what she did. And she would feed them every day, so they would hang around. But um, those particular swans have got old and passed away, I guess. And uh, the new generation obviously don't, you know wouldn't expect that because they would never have remembered it so uh, they don't come that our way so much also there was some building work um, I built some houses um, near here fairly recently along the canal and of course the noise and their wildlife sort of disappeared for a bit and it's slowly coming back which is lovely so we're going to go back to the sapphire and do these um, pieces and my plan is to make it dark here and sort of fade it towards the centre like that and make it dark here as well and just sort of start to fade it maybe leave a little bit of paper, not too much it looks sort of shiny I can't see how well you can see that I hope it's uh, I hope it's sort of showing up okay we're zoomed in fairly closely I'm just looking in the, uh, in the camera because it's so bright um, the window is um, sort of I'm looking towards the window so um, when I um, look at my camera screen, which is sort of the window is behind it, I can't. It's hard for me to see it. It's not as bad as um, when you're looking at a, a mobile phone outside in the sunshine. It's not quite that bad, but it's a bit tricky, and it's small as well, so it's tricky for me to see quite what you can see. But I'm sure you can uh, figure out what I'm up to. So I rather, as I say, I rather like this colour combo. That bit, I think, we're just over a bit. So yeah I saw a moorhen as well on the way back but apart from that it was really quiet. If I go the other way um, along the canal because towards town it's always a bit busier people are sort of going that way because it leads to the shops. If I go the other way it doesn't really lead anywhere uh, much. There's a few places obviously there's houses and things but um, it's a bit quieter 
and um, I will often see a heron, um, mandarin ducks, although I saw some our way recently, they weren't around today. Um, what else do I see? I see, um, I used to see a cormorant quite regularly, a baby one, it was, it used to dive under the water, disappear for ages and then come up miles away, well not miles, but you know, it was uh, quite spectacular to watch, which is great fun. But uh, I haven't seen a lot of wildlife. I saw an otter once, which was pretty amazing and good fun. Sorry, I'm just wiping my nose. I'm going to do a fish. So we've got the two fish either side. Now I like doing fish in orange, and but I'm not sure that... I'm trying to think if that's going to work. Um, we're going to have pink flowers. Um, we've got different types of fish. Here, but I think I might do them the same. Got to think about the watercolour as well. We've got an ocean blue which is what I might use with some white in it. Um, it needs to stand out from this of course. Um, I think orange might be a bit brash. We're going to do pink flowers. So maybe yellow is the way to go. Because um, you do get a sort of yellow carp. So I'm wondering if that, I wonder what sort of shades of yellow car part, um, yeah, let's try this, let's just go for it. So I'm going to go for the amber gold which is a slightly orangey yellow to start with on the edges and then we'll get a bit paler towards the middle of the fish, let's just go for it. They do look like carp because they've got these sort of things, <laughs> I'm being really explicit, things, you know those things, I don't know what they are, what are they? They look like antennae or something and I see them on carp. Um, is it when we go to the, um, uh, it's, it's not a Chinese, it's a Thai restaurant, they have a carp pond in the restaurant, and uh, they have those. Okay, so I've only taken it so far in, and then I'm going to do a lighter shade. Um, I think I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to go for the mustard. It's the sort of next shade in my set. I've got the 72 set of Derwent, by the way. So I haven't got the full range. Um, my husband's been looking, because he likes them. He's been looking to buy more. And I'm like, you don't need to buy more. You can just borrow mine. I don't... He, he doesn't seem to think about the cost of them. But uh, I do. I want to use them up first. I am getting through some of them. Look at this one. Ah. Uh. <laughs> It's, uh, is it my favourite green? Hmm. Actually, that one kept breaking when I first got them. And uh, I'm going to use the sun yellow for these, this bit. And the tail, sorry, and the, and the fins. Um, yeah, when I first got them, that one kept breaking. And uh, I emailed Derwent and, they, and said, you know, this one keeps breaking. What sharpener do you recommend? And they recommended this one, which is the hand crank Derwent mini point um mini point what's it called super point mini that's it that's what they recommended and uh, so i they sent me one they for free because um i'd had such a breakage problem which is very good of them and uh, so it's always worth just contacting um, manufacturers if you have a problem. I didn't ask them to send me a sharpener, I just said what would you recommend, you know, and that was that. And now, that fish, I'm going to do all the fish the same as that. We've got a dragonfly here that I've just noticed, I'm going to do that one the same as this one. Okay, I want to make there some cohesiveness between all of the um, little critters. Even though this fish is different, what I might do is do his... Hmm. Oh, I'm scratching my sunburn. I mustn't do that. It's unconscious, isn't it? You just start scratching. I might use a, a different colour for the spots. I'd probably do the body the same as this one, but leave out the the dots and do them in the light colour the same as the fins and tail. Okay, I'm going to do a bit of water. Um, so I'm going to use the ocean blue. Here he is. 
It's called Ocean Blue Dark. I don't know if there's an Ocean Blue Light. I don't have one, so I'm not sure. And I'm just going to have a go at water. Now water is... Um, some people find it tricky knowing what to do with water. Um, I tend to um, keep it really simple. It depends on what sort of water it is. Jungle water, I tend to put in some green because it looks a bit swampy. Um, if I'm doing a sort of river or sea, then I'll just tend to do blue, sometimes bluey green. It just really depends on what colours I'm doing in my picture. You see, this one is quite a nice indigo-ish type colour, which stands out from, helps the dragonfly stand out. Now, what I'm going to do with the water when I've finished um, colouring it all, so I'm not going to demo that now, is use some white pen to go over all these black ripples because water doesn't have or maybe some of them because there might be some black or darker shapes within the water <coughs> excuse me so maybe I would leave some of them in and do some white dots and dashes as well so maybe I'll leave the black there completely and then just do white ones as well now how many layers of this you do is up to you. What I am actually going to do with my water is I'm going to use one of my Derwent um, blending pencils to make it get really smooth. Now obviously water isn't really smooth but I think if I can get a smooth to start with, we've got the ripples drawn in here. I'm wondering whether that's such a good idea actually because it might if that black smudges it's going to look awful I don't know because it's quite hard to know whether it will pick up that ink the um, the chemical blending solution mm, I might not do it I might just leave it this colour that, yeah I'll just do it like this and then I'll put some white on as I said before See, I think these black bits here are fish, um, lower down in the water. So we we'll leave those black. Um, so I'm not going to colour any more water, but that shows you what I am going to do. Um, so as I say, it's quite dark, but I think that's okay. Now, when um, now I've done that, I can see I've missed a bit here then. When I'm finished with all of the colouring, i am decided that I'm actually going to put a bit of sparkle onto the dragonfly's wings. I've got a pen, which I can't find. Hold on a minute. Here it is. This is the Jelly Roll um, Sakura. It's a sort of sparkly pen, but it's clear. So it's like glitter glue, effectively. Now you could do the whole thing. In sparkly colours like I did I showed you earlier on these wings I can't see it now it's at the wrong angle but what I think I will do is actually draw over this um, this pattern with the so only on the bits that are in the lighter green in the turquoise just draw over all those bits so they sparkle just a little bit I think that's what I'm going to do with that I will show you um, at some point I may not get this finished before I edit the video. Probably will. I'll probably be able to uh, take a photo. It's always really hard to pick up spark. I know. I will have it done by my pictures I've coloured in June, completed pages for June video, and I'll show it you then. So I can tip it towards the light and you can see it. That's the best way. So I'll show it to you then. So for now, I'm just going to do those two elements for today's video. And then tomorrow, we're going to work, well three with the water, we're going to work on the lily, the water lily. We'll do the one in the middle um, because it's a bit more complex than the ones on the outside which will be done in the same colours. And we'll do the um, what is some of the, one of the lily pads as well. So I'll show you my ideas for those and uh, hopefully it'll sort of bring it all together because it'll have some pinks. So that'll be fun. So for today that's it. There's obviously plenty for you to get on with if you want to continue colouring all the elements. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to record the next video straight after because I need to head back to my computer in a bit and uh, do some 
um, editing of some other videos. So <laughs> I've got things running in the background. Oh, lots to do today. So I'm going to finish the scent a bit and uh, and then when I finish the whole thing I will post a picture um, on my Facebook page probably um, for you but as I say you'll see it in my completed pages if I do have it done before I get round to editing I'll put it on the end of my thumbnail for tomorrow's picture but chances are I may not but there we go so thank you for watching I hope that was okay if you want a more orangey fish for me, it looks a bit pale. I like orange fish, but it's. I think it works better with the other colours we're going to do. But if you want a more orangey fish, just do a more orangey fish. It's fine. Anyway, thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Tune in tomorrow for part two. And happy colouring.